Today we're going to teach you how to beat the Treasure Outlaws event, which is actually kind of fun and, uh, you know, moderately rewarding. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiscool Gaming, and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how we beat, well, played, how you can get the most value possible from the Treasure Thieves event. And honestly, it's kind of fun. You go to one of your kingdom's holy sites at the appointed starting time for the event. I'll show that to you in a minute. Uh, the times are 2, 8, and then 14 UTC. And there's going to be a marker for about 10 minutes from the appointed starting time, like you see on the screen, and then it's going to count down, and then boom, you'll be off to the races. So you can only send one march at a time across all the different places, but... You could have a couple marches nearby to pick up loot, and I'll show you that in just a second. So at the moment the timer hits zero, you're going to see these things spawn in all over the place. I try to hit it in a bunch of different holy sites, but it tells you on screen, hey, wait a minute, you can only do this at one holy site at a time or one treasure thief at a time. So I just focus in on this one where it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. The treasure thief has a bunch of different abilities, and you try to do as much damage as possible in the five minutes that he's here. Honestly, this kind of reminds me a little bit of like a treasure goblin from Diablo way back in the day. Like you try to beat the snot out of it and the more damage you deal to it, in this case, the more gold you're going to be getting, which is kind of cool. So you're going to automatically get gold as you wail on this treasure thief, which, I mean, once you get to T5, you are going to need so much gold, it's going to be ridiculous. I picked up about one and a half million gold. I didn't use an army expansion because I'm not taking any damage, although I guess a 25% army expansion if I had some extras floating around, which I happen to on my main account, would give me a little bit extra loot as we did this thing because I would do more damage. Speaking of damage, you can see at the top of the screen that the total amount of damage done to the treasure thief throughout the kingdom is being tracked. It does not matter which of these treasure thieves you're hitting. Okay, you are accumulating damage toward that grand total. I just got to look around just to see what was going on. And they must have done some sort of stun ability that slowed everybody or, or whatever to have everyone not be near the treasure thief at that moment. Not every thief here was being hunted. In fact, we didn't have all that many players online from our kingdom uh, at this exact moment in time because I don't think people expected the event was going to be here and that it would be a team event. And I like that this is a team event. So we'll talk about loot in just a minute. For now, I want to showcase some of the abilities. One of those abilities is that the treasure thief vanishes or stuns you. They can slow you. They can shackle you. And basically, just like any MMO RPG since like the beginning of time, you want to stay out of the circles on the ground. They're bad, <laughs> okay? So the red circles either are doing damage or slowing you or stunning you. Here is a slow and he's going a little bit faster, whatever. At the end of the day, oh, by the way, here's when treasure rains down from the sky, which was actually kind of cool. Like, this part was kind of cool. The treasures sort of sucked, but the fact that the treasures were raining down from the sky was kind of awesome. Nothing major to see here. Small amounts of speed ups. You could pick them up a total of three times. I didn't even pick one up because I thought, man, I don't know if this is tied to three times over the grand total of the event or this round. If you know, let me know down below in the comments. So it rained down some treasure. I didn't pick that up. And as I was saying, March speed is really valuable for this. I don't think that debuffs do anything. Ooh, by the way, here is the vanish that's about to happen. So he's about to disappear. And I honestly got faked out a couple times. Like at first I thought he was just completely gone. Then I'm like looking around. And he picked it back up going the exact same way that he was going at about the same speed he was going. But other times you'll see he disappears and goes in completely the different direction. So they're just running a circle around holy sites in your kingdom, really. And by the way, if you're in KVK and you have all the KVK technology from the Season of Conquest, I mean, like, your kingdom is just going to do better in this event, which is kind of, I mean, good for you if you're in KVK. You get more gold and you get more loot. On the topic of loot, our kingdom-wide chest is leveling up based on the grand total of damage that our kingdom is doing during the course of this event. Here you can see I got stunned. That just like rained down from the sky, which definitely sucked. Uh, but 
you know, I couldn't get out of the AOE template on the ground because I didn't have enough March speed, even though I am using Alex Herald, which I mean, instant proc damage is pretty good when you consider the fact that you're getting stunned, they disappear, and so on. Uh, but I've got a couple other ideas for what might be some like better marches. Here you can see where I got completely freaking faked out, which was kind of awesome. Like, I thought it was just going to keep going around the circle the same way, and it went the opposite way. And he said, got y'all fools, and he did, which I appreciated. I actually appreciated all of that. Here is a uh, chaining effect that has an AoE as well. So two people other than me were the primary target, but there was a circle around each of them, and I got hit by it, so I got shackled too. Is what it is. I'm still kind of right next to the boss. And I did need to re-engage the boss there in order to continue to be hitting him. So here is where two meteors drop down from the sky, and that does a stun effect. You'll see uh, the one dude, yep, up north got stunned. Uh, but the treasure chest is getting larger and larger and larger. You're going to be getting a small amount of speed ups. I mean, just a small amount of resources. It, it's better than nothing, <laughs> okay? And at the very end, you'll see some number of people get really lucky and some number of people get really unlucky, which kind of sucks, but also is absolutely freaking hilarious to see people <laughs> that like end up getting misfortune. I'm not saying that I'm, uh, I don't know, taking joy in other people's misfortune, but I do think as a mechanic in this game mode where the loot kind of doesn't matter anyways, it's kind of funny, okay? It's kind of funny. Do I wish that everybody just had fortune? Yes, obviously that will be my preference. So there's only a minute or so left. We didn't get the treasure chest, in my estimation, all that high level in the grand scheme of things, which I think was in large part because like we didn't sound the alarm to have everybody from the kingdom get on. In fact, if I'm being perfectly honest, we, I think, since we've never seen a team-oriented event like this, kind of assumed that it would be more individual-based. So there might be some advantage to having a higher score than everybody else. So I think now that we know it works very differently, I mean, obviously, we're going to really sound the alarm and try to get everybody on. I'll be very curious to see exactly how high we can get our score to be here. I mean, you know, given that you don't know which way he's going to go when he stealths, I, I mean, maybe, maybe, like, just standing still is the way to go. And you're guaranteed to be wrong, but you're equidistant from whichever way they go. Or I guess you could try to get lucky and guess which way they're going. You can see I'm sort of scouting around to see, like, where did I have a march that was maybe closer? How's it going at these other holy sites? I mean, you know, people are running around beating the loot pinata, which is, again, actually a very fun event. Uh, I'm not going to be setting my alarm to get up at the 8 UTC time slot. That feels insane to me. That's not a good time for me. Already, this is kind of late for me to be making a video at 3 UTC. Like, I, I, I want to be going to bed now, but... Here we go. End of event rewards. 38 of 10 minute speed ups and also a few 60 minute speed ups. Some people get really lucky. They're lucky leprechauns. And there are more people that get lucky than just the number that they show here. Pretty funny that there were some farms that got lucky. Uh, but anyways, you know, uh, they were participating. They did some damage on their farms. So that's fine. And then the misfortune. Oh, my God. Lol, you get less rewards, literally less hours of speed ups. Wow, so savage. Okay, so now we're back on this event screen, all right? And if I go through my rewards over here, you can see I did about one and a half million damage, which is not all that much. I feel like with the right march, you could do more. We're going to talk about some of those right marches in a second. I got 1.1 million gold. So like farming in the gold pit, one gold pit worth of gold, which you're like, hey, okay, I'll take it. And if we had gotten the treasure level higher, I've heard that you can get as high as three legendary material choice chests if you're lucky. But the thing is that when you think about an entire kingdom playing the event, like what are the chances that that ends up being you? Pretty slim, but I'm eager to push the bounds on exactly how high we can get this treasure uh, chest, this gift level to be, right? So we're going to try to get all the way up to the, the gold tier. There was one person who got three gold heads. That was the best that we did here. This is going to be on three different days, and the timing is the same on every single day. The rules detail a little bit more of everything that we just sort of talked about here. Uh, I've already shown you how these different skills work by virtue of just watching the gameplay. I'm not going to read through these, but know that they're in here, and you can see exactly what these abilities are if you want to. And if I just go over the final loot one last time... I'll make my way over to my mailbox. 
And here is the summary of the loot for our kingdom. So you can actually see like a lot of the people that got loot. All of the lucky leprechauns are up top. These folks got a few material chests, but they were green. They got uh, gold heads, which is pretty cool. A couple of people got three day speed ups, which is actually not so bad. I mean, there were a fair number of lucky leprechauns and then man rip the misfortune oh my gosh it's like funny and sad at the same time and no doubt that i'll end up being one of the misfortune one of these times but you know what hey hey you, you know what it's just gonna happen it's rise of kingdoms all right it just it, you, you gotta you gotta just embrace that sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and heck for me personally the equipment system is really really got me accustomed to being on the losing end of a lucky exchange all right so here is the event. I had a lot of fun doing it, actually. We're on voice. You beat the loot pinata. What commanders should you be using, whether you are advanced in the game and you've got a ton of commanders or you're free to play and you're new to the game? Obviously, this is all about damage. As far as I could tell, debuffs weren't doing anything. So you want tons of single target damage and you want march speed. Now, what are some commanders that can do that? I think that some of the better pairings you could be looking at, uh, and this is what we were sort of discussing with our Alliance members afterwards, would be like XY Khan. XY and Khan have a lot of march speed. They have a lot of single target damage. They have a lot of rage reduction. I think that's really solid. I think William is also a really solid candidate for the instant proc damage, which sometimes you're going to get that to trigger and then you get stunned and you're going to miss your skill cycle anyways. So having instant proc damage is really good. Also, I mean... His single target damage is fine. It's nothing insane, but he's also got a lot of attack. You don't really need defensive stats for this. So the more damage you can deal, the better. That's a part of the reason why Khan is an unusually strong recommendation here. Uh, it's uncharacteristic that I'm like, yeah, Khan is the way to go. But Khan has always been very good for PvE events. And this is a PvE event and you're not taking any damage. PvE, by the way, means player versus environment. There's no battling other players here involved in this although technically if you're in kvk you could choose a holy site to dance around with this uh, event where you could be contested i don't know why you would do that just do it in a safe zone right like seems easy doesn't that seem easy so i think khan would be a very solid choice for the rage reduction and the single target damage and the chance to do extra single target damage that is what i'm going to be using i'm going to be using khan as a secondary to xy even though my xy is not maxed and I'm, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do a con primary William secondary. Maybe I'll try that out for, for one of these events. Uh, for infantry, I used Alex and Harold, and I felt very good about that. A lot of march speed, a lot of instant proc damage. The only thing that was a little weird is like, man, you don't need to be shielding. So the active skill on Alexander the Great is a little bit wasted here. I suppose you could use a commander like Guan. And in some ways, that, that might be better. Like, Guan Herald would be kind of an interesting idea with infantry. If you were doing archers, I definitely would not be using Edward of Woodstock. I mean, you'd be looking for maybe, like, Cyrus and Ramses might be the way to, like, eke out the most single-target damage. The only downside is that you don't get the debuff from Cyrus there. So, I mean, look, most people probably have, like, Ramses and Esong. Use those, and they're going to be just fine for this event with the exception of being maybe a little bit slow because of the march speed, you are going to wish that you had that, 100%. I mean, I don't think El Cid is good because he's got a disable effect. He's got less damage anyways. I mean, honestly, more troops, you're not really taking damage, and really, really high single target damage is kind of interesting. I don't know exactly how Freddy would work, but he might actually be pretty decent. Like, you just need to crank as much single target damage as you possibly can. Con Freddy, anybody? Should I try it out one time with Con Freddy and we see how it does? I, I, I may just do that just to see. Now, if you're looking at epics and you're trying to figure out how do I crank more damage, just cool. A couple things come to mind. First of all, I don't know if it counts as a barbarian. Uh, but Boudica is still actually pretty solid single target damage. She does a little bit of healing, but she also does rage restoration and some damage boosts. I think Boudica with Osman would not be the worst pairing that you could do. Uh, in fact, when I think about other pairings that you might consider, uh, I think Diao Chan, if, heck, if Freddy is good, Diao Chan is also a good candidate potentially for doing a lot of single target damage. 
The heal effect is not all that valuable here, so eh, maybe a little bit lukewarm on Diao Chan for the same reason I'm kind of lukewarm on Freddy, but Diao Chan and Osman could do very well. I'd be eager to hear how that combo performs if you try it. And if you wanted to be using Cavalry, I think that, for example, like Buy Bars is pretty decent. His single target damage is fine. It's just okay. Um, it does boost your attack. And when you uh, leave combat, you are going to get a little bit of March speed, which is nice. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe Pelagius, maybe Boudica, Buy Bars. Like those three commanders and you use Cavs seems pretty reasonable to me. We debated whether or not you would really want to be using like a buffing march nearby, like a Joan of Arc or Trajan. I think that would be reasonable if you didn't have any other solid march because at the end of the day, your damage matters only for the amount of gold that you're getting as far as I can tell. The rest of the rewards are just a team level reward anyways. So if buffing the team is actually how you generate the most value, Maybe that's the play. I feel lukewarm about that, to be perfectly honest. But uh, in that instance, like Joan of Arc and Osman, I guess. But I really think that when that thing stealths, you are going to want the march speed. When that thing stuns you, you are going to want the march speed. And the only epic commander who actually has a decent amount of march speed, weirdly enough, is Herman? Now, the problem with Herman is that you can't actually silence the target. So some of his kit is not as valuable. But, I mean, you could find a way to weave in an unmaxed El Cid, depending on how much you have it advanced. I don't love that. But, like, Herman seems like an okay way, maybe, with Osman to get some March Speed and do some damage. I don't know, man. I, I think this event's pretty fun. I'll be eager to hear your scores down below in the comments. What's the best that you do in this event? Do you like it? I actually think that it's pretty cool. It's a team event. It requires kingdom-wide participation. Some people get lucky, and in a comedic and tragic way, other people get unlucky. And, like, now that I've talked about how funny that is that people get unlucky, I'm sure I'm going to get pwned. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, throw a like on here, and subscribe. I always make videos about new events pretty much as soon as they land, so why would you want to miss out on that? Subscribe so you know exactly how to play new events when they land. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. And real soon, I'll have a video with my yearbook stats. And there's some pretty wild stuff in there.